Hello everyone, welcome to week four and the final week of the Something Small prompt in the Facebook group, the Mixed Media Emporium. Now, Carly and I have been putting our heads together and we've decided to give you a bit of flexibility and freedom this week and you can create any small project of your choice, whether you want to do an embellishment, maybe revisit some of the other projects that we've done during this particular month's prompt, entirely up to you. Now, I have received lots of requests recently for more ideas using dried flowers. I've shared quite a few projects using dried flowers with you recently and some of you are really liking them. So I had an idea when I was doing my puzzle pieces last week and thought I'd share them with you today. I've got some of the dried flowers that I received from your creative studio. These came in a pack, they were vac packed and I'm going to be using some of these today. Now I have managed to find something very very similar. I purchased this pack from eBay. It was less than five pounds I think including delivery and this is a very very similar set to the one that I received from Your Creative Studio. This was just one of the many elements that were in the Your Creative Studio box and I'll leave the link to that in the description box below um, but this is very similar. I'm not sure it's as good quality as the one I received from Your Creative Studio but you know I'm sure we can do something with some of these. I've also been drying flowers from my uh, um, own garden as well so let me just show now, you. This is a selection of flowers that I've picked from my garden and dried in a heavy book and I've just placed a household brick on top of it to weight everything down. These ones have been drying for about three or four weeks so I've got a mixture of daisies and clovers and that kind of thing. Those have dried and pressed really well. We've got some chives as well. This is their natural colour. Just love those. We've got these bluey purple flowers here. I'm not sure what those are, but um, nice and vibrant anyway. I've picked some of my wisteria petals as well. Those have dried beautifully. I've also got this white um, rose type flower. I'm not sure what, um, what that is. What else have we got? We've got some of this um, cow parsley, which is naturally white. I've taken some alcohol markers to some of the fronds as well, just to, you know, try different colourways. You've seen me use alcohol markers with dried flowers before. Before. Sometimes if you don't use your flowers straight away they tend to fade um, and lose their colour and you can use your alcohol markers to bring them back to life. So I've got a mixture of Letraset Pro markers here and Windsor and Newton. Any alcohol marker will work, even Sharpie markers or even alcohol ink that you can apply with a paintbrush and I've just colourised some of these and I just think that's really fun. So I've got a mixture of blues, reds and purple tones there that um, I might be able to use. And then I've got some of the these um, petals and, and flowers here so forget me not so I've got no idea what some of these are I'm not very greed fingers uh, fingered if the truth be known and more buttercups I guess what I'm saying is that you don't have to go and buy commercial flowers if you've got flowers in your garden you know press press those you may even have some already pressed to use now I'm going to use some of the flowers that I've got left over from your creative studio and I'm going to use a domino piece um, I'm going to give it a good clean with some acetone you could use rubbing alcohol Hole as well. This will just clean it and give you a nice clean surface to work on. Get rid of any fingerprints and, and marks that ha might happen to be on the piece of dominoes. So let's just um, go over that quickly. I'm more worried about the top surface here. So that, that will do. So I'm just going to give that a couple of seconds to dry. And then I'm going to use some um, Mod Podge mixture to glue my flower down. So this is a mixture of three parts Mod Podge and one part water and I'm just going to apply that with with a brush like this. So I'm just going to pop a coat of glue all over the face of the dominoes like that and this will just hold down my flower. So let's have a look, I want to, oh there we go, it's come, come apart, hang on a second, let's have a look. Now I want my flower to go on there like that and I'm wondering actually whether I can use this one that's um that's fallen off here as well let's have a look and see if we can pop that down I'm going to stand up to to do this because this is just a little bit fiddly see I like that there like like that and then I'm just going to very very carefully pop another coat of glue over the top. I'm just going to hold that down with my finger. There we go. And then I'm just going to have to set that aside for the glue 
to dry. There we go. Now you can speed the drying process up using a heat tool if you want to, but hold it at a distance because you don't want um, the glue to bubble and you don't want it on too high a temperature either. It's a really hot day here today, so I'm just going to give that five, 10 minutes or so and that will dry naturally. So let me just lift this up. That's what it looks like so far. Now the glue on my dominoes is now dry and you can see that I've got it resting on a roll of washi tape and that's because the dominoes has got a pin in the centre and if I just lay it flat like this it rocks from side to side because this is domed and so I've just got a roll of washi tape that does the trick so now that will lay nice and flat because what I want to do is apply a layer of dimensional glue. I'm going to be using the Jedekins Diamond Glaze. I love this stuff. It's really easy to use. It dries beautifully clear and you get very few air bubbles. I also recommend glossy accents as well. There are lots and lots of dimensional glues on the market and in my opinion, yours might not be the same as mine, but in my opinion, not all dimensional glues are the same. I've got three others here. I've got the DecoArt Media Liquid Glass. This is really thick and I find this really difficult to squeeze out of the tube. So if you've got, um, you know, hand mobility, issues then I would say that this is not the one for you. I've also got um, the Mod Podge Dimensional Magic. This stuff just gives me so many problems because I just end up with so many air bubbles. It drives me mad. It's just ridiculous. I personally wouldn't recommend this one here. I've also got the Anita's Clear Gloss 3D Gel. I can't really give you an opinion on this because I've only used it as a glue. I've not used it as a dimensional glue for doing um, a project like this. Um, and I might try this today, not on camera, but just so that I can let it dry overnight and give you an honest opinion as to what I think about it. I think, you know, this would be a good opportunity to try it out. I've also got one of the, you know, the, the, the UV nail polish the, the um, uh, uh, heaters that you stick your nails under when you're doing gel nails. I've got one of those and I've also got this um, UV resin. I don't get on with this at all. This was recommended a couple of years ago by a friend and I asked for it for Christmas and I don't know whether it's the resin or the UV lamp that I'm using but I don't get any dimension and it dries with a really milky finish as well. I don't get a, a, a nice clear effect that, that I'm after. So if anybody else has got a UV lamp and you've tried the UV resin, give me some tips and let me know. Is it just my, my glue that isn't up to scratch or is it something, you know, that I could be doing wrong? I'd be interested to know your thoughts. So today I'm going to be using the Jedekins Diamond Glaze. And all I'm going to do is just take the lid off, just stick a pin in the end just to make sure that um, it's not going to clog on me. And then very, very carefully, what I'm going to do is go backwards and forwards. In fact, what you want to do first, let me do this so that you can see what I'm doing, is just put a, a dab of glue. Um, I'm using parch uh, deli paper just to make sure that you haven't got any air bubbles before you start and I'm just going to start off at one end and I'm just going to go backwards and forwards continuously, not stopping like this. All over my piece of, of dominoes until the whole of the dominoes is, is covered. Now this stuff takes um, a long time to dry. This is going to have to dry overnight, but I should end up with a most beautiful, clear looking flower by the end of this and this will make a beautiful embellishment or at least I hope it will anyway. So I'm just going to continue doing this and then I'm just going to have to set this aside on a tray out of reach, especially out of Louis's reach so that he doesn't, you know, dump, jump up on my table and come and put his um, paws in it. So there we go. That's all nicely covered. And at this point, what you want to do is sort of look sideways and see if you've got any air bubbles. I haven't got any this time. I've um, done a really good job of that. But if you have, take a dressmaker's pin and just pop it in the air bubble and it should release it. And as I say, it's just really important now to keep this on a very, very flat surface out of harm's way and let it dry overnight. I left the dominoes on a tray drying 
overnight and just popped them on top of my printer and um, just so that they were out of harm's way so I can now take these off that's all nice and set let's just just get rid of that tray and this is what they look like I did too this was the one that you saw me do and this was another one that I did using the Anita's clear 3d gloss gel that's worked a treat um, as well so that's that's how they look nice and clear I did find that the Anita's um, clear gloss gel gave me a few more air bubbles but you know that was fine I just popped them with um, whoops daisy a dressmaker's pin so I just used one of these just to pop any air bubbles and it's dried fine now this one here I've still got um, a couple of stems hanging um, over the bottom I'm just going to trim those off like that um, now the edge especially on this one here is not particularly even um, and that's really my fault it's because it was starting to get a bit dark in my craft room and not very easy to see where I was applying the glue so I'm just going to take some of my treasure gold I get asked a lot of questions about the treasure gold um, it's not easily available absolutely everywhere um, but um, oh gosh freeze Pebio Pebio do a gilding wax that's um, very very similar so do um, check that out if you can't get hold of the treasure gold treasure gold comes in a few different colors this one here is Florentine so what I'm going to do to just try and disguise that edge is just go over the edge here with a tiny bit of the treasure treasure gold which will just um, fill that edge in like like this so that it's not um, noticeable anymore so I'm just going to go off camera now and do that as carefully as I can that's what it looks like once you've added the treasure gold I just think that's so pretty and I let it sit for just a couple of minutes and then I just wiped um, any of the excess away with um, a damp baby wipe and I just really like the way that that looks I've decided I'm going to keep this one plain as it is and I'm going to add a jewelry bale so let me just show you how I'm going to do that bale here and this will just give me the opportunity to either use it as a pendant or you know use it as a, a, a charm for a journal I've just wiped the back of my domino just with some acetone just to get rid of any grease, finger marks and that kind of thing. In fact, I think I'll do the same with the bale as well. Now, I've got some E6000. My lid is just welded shut, but I've still got loads of glue left in this um, and it seems to be fine. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut um, the corner of the tube off here like this um, and I think I'll pour some out onto a piece of deli paper here we go I've got um, a piece here and then I can just um, fold the the tub back up again um, in a second once I've once I've finished so that I don't waste it and maybe hold that in place with a with a clip here we go so we can just clip clip that down and hopefully that will hold it so that I can use it again I'm going to use a toothpick to apply the glue of a toothpick and all I'm going to do let's hope I've uh, put out enough of the glue I'm just going to fill the little crevice on this jewelry bale here I don't want too much glue coming out of the sides because otherwise you know it just makes a makes a mess I'm just going to use my finger just to carefully wipe away any excess and then just quickly quickly use a baby wipe to get get it off my fingers because this stuff just gets everywhere and then I'm going to apply my bale to the back of the dominoes so just make sure I've got that centered like that and again I'm just going to have to let that sit for the glue to dry um, and that's going to take probably at least two or, th or three hours but I just think that will make a lovely um, charm for a journal or a pendant to wear. The bale has now dried and that's what it looks like. I did wipe off any excess glue from around the side before I set it off to dry. I love how that looks. And as I said earlier, you could either wear this as a necklace by just threading a silver chain through it. You could use it as um, a keychain, as a dangle embellishment for a journal. Just so many uses for these. I just think they're really good fun. And having the domino on the back doesn't offend me in the slightest if it bothers you you could always cover it up with a piece of fabric and this one here is now being finished off as well this is the one that I added the treasure gold to I used my Dremel drill to drill a hole in the top of the domino here and I've just added a gold tone picture framing hook so one of these um, screw eyes brass plated these are just you know the things that you use to um, frame your pictures and I think that's finished that one off really 
nicely as well. Now, I've got an idea um, that I want to try for those of you that don't have any dimensional glue. Now, this time I've chosen one of the buttercups from my garden that I've pressed. And again, I'm just going to apply a small amount of watered down glue. This is three parts Mod Podge and one part water. So we'll just apply a thin coat over the top there. Let me just pop my paintbrush in the, in the lid. And then I'm just going to attach my buttercup. Let's try and get as much of it in as we can. Tap that down. And then again, I'm just going to apply a layer of glue over the top. There we go. And then I'm going to use, let me just make sure that I've got that in place. I'm going to use a napkin as I've done with previous projects. So this is just the third ply of a white catering napkin. So I'm just going to press that down and then I'm just going to very, very gently go over the top again with some more glue. Um, again, as I said before, when I've done this with the um, napkin layers, make sure that you get rid of any air bubbles um, just by tapping your paintbrush really gently where you can see an air pocket. You can see where they are because um, the napkin bubbles slightly. You tend to get them along the stems and maybe in the centre of the flower where it's a bit thicker as well. And again, I'm just going to set that off to dry dry now and you can see that I've just trimmed slightly around the edges and I'm just going to use a nail file now just to trim the rest away so I'm just going to very very gently go around the edges like this until that napkin um, comes off you can see it's starting to come away from the edges already you can see after a bit of very gentle sanding that it's just starting to come um, straight away so I'm just going to keep going all the way around. So that's how that one looks. Definitely, definitely works if you're using tissue paper as well. You can just see the buttercup absolutely beautifully. And that's how it looks in comparison to the really shiny one. So some of you might prefer that matte finish idea I had was making embellishments using wooden puzzle pieces and wooden plaques. These two here are wooden Jenga pieces, two different sizes. This is a Scrabble tile. This one here is a wooden plaque that I got, 16 pieces for a pound from the works. Now these, let me just show you the difference because I've sanded this one down. These are quite rough. Um, I don't know whether you can see around the edges and you need to take a nail file and just smooth the edges it only takes a couple of seconds but I'm going to paint these um, I've also got um, a wooden dominoes piece here as well this came from the pound shop I didn't realize when I bought it um, that these have got stickers on the front but they just mean in fact that most of them are already peeling off you can just peel them off really really easily so the top layer comes off quite quite quickly and then if you just take a baby wipe and just apply a little bit of acetone to it and then just just rub that over the rest of the sticker just with a little bit of work not much it'll melt the glue and you'll get rid of the rest of the sticker and again um, if I show you these are really rough around the edges then again you just need to take um, a nail file and smooth them. I want them. to paint my embellishments before I do anything with the flowers I'm going to start off with the Pebio Studio Acrylics High Viscosity um, Grey Paint. Oh, this is nice and opaque it dries really quickly as well. I'm going to use one of my stamp pads as um, a little palette and I've got a paintbrush here now the easiest and quickest thing to do is go around the edges first this is so quick and easy and you want a really thin coat of paint um, so I'm just going to do the edges first and then I'm just going to dry this with my heat tool it's going to take two coats on all the sides so we'll just do that first and then I'm just going to grab a piece of deli paper to pop it down to, which will stop it sticking. And just use my heat tool then, just to very, very quickly, just blast around the edges. It's so warm here at the moment, it's not gonna take um, long anyway. And then I'm just going to go over with another coat before I do the front and back. And I just find that this way of doing things just gives me um, a neater finish. And it's just quicker as well. It just takes literally a couple of minutes. So there we go. That's the second coat um, around the sides. Again, I'm just going to stick it on my piece of deli paper and blast 
again with the, the heat tool. And you can probably see where it's drying. It just dries really, really quickly. So then I can do one of the main sides. Just going over with a really thin coat of, of paint. You don't want to load your paintbrush up here because you'll just get a really horrible and even finish. And then I can twist the deli paper around the other way just because it's easier for me to paint like that and just go over the remainder like this and again I can just give that a quick blast with my my heat tool I'm only putting it on a low heat and of course I'm waving it because I do not want um, any lumps and bumps and for the paint to blister so that's that side done I can now go over with my second coat of paint and then I'll do exactly the same with the with the back I appear to get a bit carried away because I painted loads of these little wooden embellishments and I've also pulled out um, just a few and of course I've got more if I need them as well of some of the flowers that I thought might fit. I've also got this pack here which I can use and so I'm just going to use both methods, um, both the um, dimensional glue and the um, napkin method and I'm going to assemble some more of these embellishments. But before I start, these ones here because they're very thin, I think are going to lend themselves to um, having some dangles and things added to them so I've grabbed my Japanese screw punch and what I'm going to do is just punch some holes in the top and the bottom so in fact what I'll do is line this up on my mat so that I can find the centre and I'm going to have one about there um, I want to be able to put um, a jump ring through this so I don't want it too far from the edge oh come on Nina and so I'm just going to punch through like this there we go and I'm going to do exactly the same at the bottom and I'll do the same with these ones as well. So again another 24 hours later and this is what I've ended up with. I just love these. I think they're gorgeous. I've got such a variety. I love the colours, everything about them. So that's one of the shiny ones that I did with the dimensional glue um, and just to compare sort of like for like this is one that I just applied the napkin over the top of and I think that both equally beautiful so what i want to do is decorate some of these and just turn them into embellishments that we can use in our projects i'm going to start off with this one here um, let me just grab another one of these flowers started off with and you can see that it's got this beautiful very very delicate um sort of lilac pale lilac top to the flower which has got lost once i've applied the tissue paper so i just want to try and replicate that so i've got some alcohol markers here i think these are both very very similar in colour this one looks to be slightly darker and all I'm going to do is just in fact that one's a bit too too pink maybe um it doesn't really matter um because of course you know they don't all have to look the same anyway but I'm just going to try and add just a little bit more colour to that flower just to try and bring it back to life um, just so that you can notice it a bit more it doesn't have to be exact or a perfect match so here we go. I'm just going to add some of this alcohol marker. This is just a cheapy alcohol marker that I got from the works here in the UK. Um, now I'm going to see if I can find a cream um, just to try and um, put some of that into the base of the flower as well. Okay, so I've grabbed a couple more colours. Let me just find um, the fine tip. Um, this is sort of like a, a cream colour and I think this one might, might do it. It looks more orangey on the nib but it's not and I think that's working quite quite well so that's just bringing that back to life I love that um, then I've also got um, an olive green as well so let's find the fine tip here and maybe we can just you know just try and add a bit of depth to that as well just on the on the tips like like this and then I'm just going to set that um, aside to dry and I'm going to do the same with this one here as well just add some of the green back in to add a bit of contrast you see that looks better already and I just love the way that when you use the tissue paper that you can just add some highlights and um, you know 
add your own touch. Love that. I've added touches of colour to almost all of these using my alcohol markers, mainly to the stems. I've added a bit of white acrylic paint. I think it was gesso actually on this one here. Um, some green to this one um, just to make them stand out and be a bit more vibrant. And now I've got some of my Authentico chalk wax. This is the white chalk wax. And what I'm going to do is just add a protective layer over all of the ones that um, haven't had the dimensional glue. Um, I just want to see what um, what this does as well. Does it make any difference to the to the look of these? Because of course I've used chalk paint. Whoops, a daisy! I've dropped it. I've used chalk paint on these anyway. So I'm going to go all all around the sides and the back. Um, then I shall pop these aside for a minute or two and then buff them, buff them up. And then I want to add some embellishment. So I'm just going to leave them like that. I'll do that as I say to um, all of these. I'm just using a microfiber cloth to add my wax. You don't have to do this. I'm only doing this because I've got it. You could, of course, varnish um, your pieces if you wanted to, to, you know, give them longevity. It depends on what you're planning on using them for. Um, spray varnish would work well as well. I'm waiting for the wax to dry on these ones here. I want to have a go at embellishing some of these. I'm going to start off with this one here. What I want to do is poke a hole in the top and the bottom. I'm just going to eyeball it and use my pokey tool just to make a hole. Whoops, Daisy, am I in camera? Like this. So let me show you on the bottom as well, just so that you can see what I'm doing. So I'm just eyeballing the centre which I think is about there. And I'm just using my pokey tool here just to make a hole. And then I've got a bag, where have they gone? Of little picture framing hooks. Um, the same ones you saw me use earlier. I've got a few silver ones. These are really tiny. Um, let's pull out um, a few of these, there we go. And I'm just going to add one of these to the top and the bottom. And once you've made your hole with your pokey tool, these will screw in relatively easily so there we go just screw those in like like that and I'm going to pop one at the bottom as well and this will allow me then to add a couple of dangles I've also grabbed myself a couple of jump rings. I think these are either seven or eight millimeter jump rings. I've also got one of these keychain hooks here. I bought these a long time ago in a pack from eBay. I must admit these are not the best quality ones. I pay a bit more personally next time and buy some better quality ones just because these have a tendency to tarnish. But, you know, they work. They do the job. They're OK. And I'm just going to open up my jump ring. Pop one through the top like this and then thread my keychain on top, my lobster claw, and then I can close close that. And I've got a cerise pink tassel which matches the colour of the flowers which I'm going to add to the bottom. So I'm just going to open up this jump ring as well, thread that one onto the bottom and pop the tassel and there we go that has just transformed that tile into the most beautiful embellishment that we can either use as a keychain or hang from a journal isn't that just so gorgeous i've been waiting for the wax to set and harden slightly i've made all of these just look at these ones here i just love these these are the scrabble tiles and i use some of the tim holtz ideology trinket pins i think those are really cute and those would look lovely added to a tag just as a little dangle um, you know any kind of embellishment I think those are really really gorgeous and of course these are the other charms um, as well so I just want to buff these up and see what these look like let's try this one here I love this one and this should add just you know a protective layer being finishing wax and you know maybe a bit of texture to it as well let's see so i'll buff these up and as soon as i've done that i'll come back i absolutely love the look that this um, white chalk wax has given to my pieces can you see that you can still see some of the wax that's um, settled in some of the little crevices it's also settled um, in the back of the wood as well now let me just bring back my chalk wax this is authentico chalk wax and it's meant for furniture for 
um, chalk painted furniture. It's a mixture of um, pure beeswax and canuba wax. It's also got turpentine in it as well. And it just sets to a really good durable finish. I use this when I'm um, doing picture frames. If I paint my picture frames um, with chalk wax, then I'll give this a finish afterwards. Now, this is going to take probably, I don't know, 24, 48 hours to completely cure, maybe even longer. So, you know, that's absolutely fine by me. Um, and then this will just, you know, give the, um, the, the the pieces here a really nice durable finish. Mine's the wax, uh, the white tint, so white chalk wax, if anybody is interested. I think Annie Sloan and several others do very similar things as well. It's just a furniture finishing wax that, that, that you're looking for if you're interested. So I'm now going to go off and add a few embellishments to these as well. And as soon as I've done that, I'll be back. Just look at this gorgeous array of beautiful embellishments. I'm so happy with these. I think they're gorgeous. I think they're really, really beautiful. And of course, I've got these ones here as well. These were the ones that I did with domino pieces. These have got much more of a vintage um, vibe going on. At least I think so anyway. So, you know, just more ideas thrown into the pot. But, you know, I hope this has given you some more ideas as to how you can use dried flowers in your projects. Because, as I said um, at the beginning of the video, that's been requested um, by quite a few people over the last few weeks. So, just to recap, the prompt for this month is something small. And for the last three weeks, Kylie and I have been setting you weekly challenges. But we've decided to keep it a bit more flexible um, for this week and give you the freedom to produce any small project of your choice. So I look forward to seeing what everybody else decides to come up with. There's been some wonderfully creative ideas shared in the group so far. And for anybody that would like to join along with our monthly challenges, I'll leave the link to the Mixed Media Emporium in the um, description box below. Don't forget to go and check out Kylie's video this week as well to see what she's been up to. But I hope you enjoyed my project today. And as always, if you did, I'd always appreciate a thumbs up. Do let me know what you think in the comments below and take care everyone thanks for watching and i'll see you all again soon bye for now